everybody and welcome back to my channel. Um, today we're going to be working on an 11 by 14 stretched canvas. I've primed this canvas and prepped it with one coat of acrylic gesso. This is the brand that I use just in case you're wondering but there's plenty of others out there and lots of different options for prepping your canvas. If you're curious this is all I do. I just use a regular brush, no water, one coat of this and then I let it dry. If it feels a little bit scratchy or bumpy, you can uh, sand it finely and carefully and then apply another coat. Um, but it depends on what kind of canvas you're using. If you're using a fine tooth canvas, there's different um, uh, types and levels of canvas. Um, but you can find out more about that in an upcoming video I've got, so stay tuned for that. And I've got just a few little dishes here that I'm going to start pouring my paint out on and we can go over the colors. So this is a really fun uh, landscape, fall landscape fantasy piece today. Fantasy paintings are my favorite and I've got probably more fantasy pieces and tutorials here on my channel than anything else. That being said, I've got a little bit of everything. So have a look through all my playlists if you're new to my channel. If you are new, welcome and please subscribe. Uh, so let's get started guys. The first color I'm gonna be adding is my light blue violet. We're going to work, as always, with a landscape, background to foreground. So we're applying the layers in order. I have a little bit of Brilliant Purple. We'll also be using some Light Olive Green. I've got some Luminous Yellow Warm. A little bit of luminous yellow cool and we're just going to start with these for now of course i will be adding a little bit more i've got a large blending brush today this is a filbert brush and i've actually got to give away a contest a little contest coming up very soon on patreon so i'm going to be doing monthly giveaways uh and this month depending on when you're watching this video this is august 2021 right now uh, at the end of the month i'm going to be um picking the lucky name of a patron to win one of these large filbert brushes i love these brushes they have lasted me so long i use them for lots of things foliage waterfalls and adding large backgrounds working on skies um, but what i like to do before i begin adding my paint is on top of the acrylic gesso once it's dry i get just a little bit of water and I just slick the canvas. Here we have a nice slick canvas all ready to take the paint. And I'm going to begin with my light blue violet. I love this color. It's so pretty. It adds so much to all the other colors in my paintings. I've said this color is sort of a magic color. The reason is because it tends to be complementary with almost every single color. I haven't found a color yet, in fact, that it doesn't look nice with. So I tend to use this color quite often for my skies and my shadows when I'm adding cool shadows to my paintings. Okay, I'm gonna add a little bit more. I wanna be a little bit more generous. I wanna create more depth in this painting. So I'm gonna do another layer there. And because we have a little bit of water underneath, it can dilute the paint just a little bit, as you can see, making it kind of fade out. We've got this ombre happening here, so dark to light. And at this point, I'm gonna start picking up this pretty violet color, purple color. You can use any pastel purple that you want. And I'm gonna begin adding it down here. It doesn't really matter, we're gonna be going over all this anyway, so you can have this as an underpainting down below. Now I didn't wash the blue out of my brush, and I like that because look at the pretty different tones, these soft pastel tones, different purples and blues. So I'm just gonna work this up into that blue. Let's add a little bit more, it's so pretty. Now I'm gonna take without washing my brush, a little bit of white. I actually thought that I had this already out on my palette. Uh, well, let's go ahead and we'll add our white too. 
another clean little dish here. So without, and I'll just set that green off to the side there because we're not, we're not using that yet. Without washing my brush, pick up a little bit of white and just in this area here, I'm gonna create some softer tones. You just wanna take your brush and carefully create these little wisps and slight scoops. And this is gonna give you that really soft, hazy, dreamy background. So the types of clouds that you add in your paintings are going to uh, change the mood and the overall feeling of your painting. So keep that in mind if you have really pronounced clouds really in detail and focus uh, it's going to make your painting a little bit stronger and you if you want a softer dreamier feeling to your painting then this is how i recommend uh, you approach them but i have a few videos on how to paint clouds and skies so look for that in my playlist or i'll leave a link at the bottom in the description area of this video i'm going to dry this off now and then we're going to start our next step so we're going to start with some of the bushes in the background a little bit of a more of a backdrop before we um, add our cute little fantasy fairy tale house Right, the painting is all dry. There's just a little area up at the very top here that's a bit wet. It's okay, I'm not uh, going over anything up there for now, so we can just concentrate on the bottom section here. And I'll show you the next two colors we're gonna be using. Okay, so these are the colors we're gonna be using for our foliage in the background. I've got luminous violet, and I've also got this olive green. And I'll just remind you again, if you're just tuning in now, this is the brand. I like to show you guys the brands as well because you're always asking, but I also want to remind you that if you don't have these same shades that I'm using, the same brands of paints, you can still create this painting. Okay, so for the background, I'm going to be using an oval mop brush. I don't want to get this brush wet first because then it's going to wreck the shape. And we want to keep this poofy shape nice and soft and delicate to create our soft uh, trees for the background. Now, they're very um, out of focus, so we don't need to add a lot of detail here. So all we want to do is just add color and make it soft. So to load the brush... It's important to learn how to load these brushes properly. You don't want to flatten and pull like that, right? You want to keep this shape. Always, always think about keeping the shape. So I like to, when I'm using two colors, if I want to blend, I want to just pull a little bit, but then tap right away. You don't want to tap into too much of that paint. Otherwise, you're going to uh, saturate your brush too much and it's going to lose that shape. So both colors, you know what I noticed these two colors are making? Looks like burnt sienna. That's interesting. So I'm actually gonna take just a little bit more of the purple or the violet and see how I'm loading it. So I'm tapping more of the top part of my brush into that purple. And that way it's a little bit more purple on the top. And it gives me sort of a, a shade that's different. So I'm getting two things done at once. The bottom, the bottom in green and the top in purple. So here just to give you a little bit more of a, an example here. And then I'm going to pull and sweep a little bit down below here. These are going to be some shadows that we've got down below and then we'll quickly go and tap again it's got a little mixture here right Some darker areas and some lighter areas where that paint is starting to work out of and I know we're gonna go over part of this with our house but it's better to have to go over that than have a gap and then try to go back later in between the house to add more of these 
I'm gonna take more green this time and just gonna start tapping in here a little bit. I love these earthy olive green tones in a painting. They're a nice balance when you have pretty pinky colors and all those bright neon colors. I find that it's just a really nice balance. It helps to bring everything, pull everything together. So a little bit more right here. And then I'm gonna take some more of the purple now. I'm gonna go right down here. Now this will be drying a bit darker. Acrylic paint does. And this might not even be dark enough. I might have to go in and add a little bit more, but when I add more highlights, that'll automatically make my darker areas look even darker. I just wanna use the remainder on here. I don't wanna waste it. And I really can use this down here to just kind of finish off and pull tap in for some shadows. And at this point I can use, cause I don't need to have it poofy in the shape anymore. So I can just tap in, pull in a little bit of water just to help. Pull that paint out of there. So I really like this palette that we've got going on here. It's nice and relaxing and it already feels very fallish, doesn't it? These muted tones, the muted green and against that pretty sky. Okay, I'm gonna switch over to a dry mop brush. This is one of uh, the makeup brushes that I get on Amazon for um, blending and tapping. And what I'm gonna do is just take a little bit of my purple and blue here, tiny bit of white, just a little bit more here. Okay, so just a very light, soft color here. And I'm gonna make these hazy. I'm gonna set these back in the distance and make this look extra soft and dreamy-like by just doing these circular motions I kind of do clockwise and counterclockwise. Again, take a little bit more. And we'll go over to the other side, do the same thing. Let's get a little bit more paint mixed up here, my little dish, stir it up like it's a little color recipe. <laughs> Whoops. So here there's a bit more white than what I'd like, so I'm just gonna wipe the excess off on a towel here. And Work that off. So it's nice and soft now. I really like the way that background is gonna look and we can add more detail and focus here that's gonna stand out. This will give us more perspective, out of focusness, drawing our eyes in to our focal point here, which is this cute little house. Okay, so before I wash this brush off, I know I can use this for adding some highlights right here. And I'm gonna do that right away. I'm gonna take a little bit more of my olive green, a little bit of white, a little bit of white, and a little bit of this neon yellow. So I'm gonna really, and I'm kind of pushing. I don't wanna tap it like this. I wanna have it a little bit more controlled. So I sometimes just kind of pinch my brush in between my fingers like this where I want to have it a little bit narrower. You could use a filbert brush too, but if you've already got this brush and you don't want to have to use a new one and a different one and wash that out, it just saves you a little bit of work, right? You can manipulate these brushes around by just squishing them. A little bit more of those colors again, titanium white, olive green, neon yellow, cool. 
So I'm just tapping and I pick up, I push tap and I pick up my brush, turn it a different way to change the direction, right? To give it more of a round look. So kind of by squishing it like this and pinching it, I can get into some narrower areas and I can also turn it, squish it this way. And if I wanted to add some taller ones on the side, I could, but I don't in this case. I just want to have a little bit of, just a little bit of this, these lower lying ones that are a little bit skinnier. Okay, so now I'm going to wash that brush off. I'm all done with that. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm ready to start painting this cute little house. Kind of reminds me of a little hobbit house. We're just going to make our own thing up here. And by all means, go ahead and change yours however you want. Add a little bit of something else. Really make it your own. You could add some little shutters, more flowers. Um, you could do this as a winter painting. And maybe if this, if you guys like this one enough and you want it, uh, want to see a version of this as a winter one, uh, leave a comment below and let me know. Okay, so we're going to start the little house in uh, white. Where's my hair? is. And I'm going to be using a filbert brush for the shape of this because it's round and this has the round end and I can really use this to my advantage to get that shape easily. Better than if I were to try and do that with a flat brush, right? So I'm just going to take a little bit of my white. I'm just doing it in white first just to get the shape. So I'm going to start here kind of at the top, wiggle, and then push a little bit more, come down, over, and then start to add maybe a few little branches or something right there. And then this side's gonna come just down a little bit lower and then widen out. So I'm just gonna do like a thin coat of this cause I kind of do like the light purple there in the back or underneath. I think I'm gonna use that for part of the color of the house. But I don't want this foliage to be there, right? I wanna make sure that it looks like this is in front of that and we're not seeing the foliage through. So I'll just scumble out. And even if I pick up a little bit of this like I did there, I can go over that. And that color doesn't even matter. Just as long as we don't see those colors right through. But this is kind of just blending in, changing, and it's not transparent anymore. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and just add the door right now. And I think I wanna make the door, and I think phthalo blue would be really cool. You could do like a bright red or emerald green, but I think I wanna use my phthalo blue with a little bit of turquoise. So we'll be using, I better just wash this out quickly before I forget about it and this brush gets ruined. I've got, Grumbacher Thalo Blue and Liquitex Basics Acrylic Bright Aqua Green for my turquoise. I'm just gonna go ahead and add it to that dish there. And then a little bit of my Thalo Blue. We don't need a lot of this. I probably, I definitely poured out more than what I need, but it helps you guys to see it a little bit better. So I think I'm gonna switch over to a smaller, narrower filbert. This one's a number four. And it's just because then I have a little bit more control just painting something smaller, right? So I'm gonna take my phthalo blue first. And instead of a circle, I'm gonna uh, make an oval shape. More of an oval shape. If you want a circle shape, you could. This is actually starting to look more like a circle, isn't it? Either or will work just fine. OK, 
see a little bit more of that blue. We really want the outside of the door to be nice and dark and stand out. And then I can just come in here and slide my brush up and down. That will already start to give us a little bit of the planks of wood design. And then I'm going to take my turquoise without washing my brush off. And I'm going to start just adding those little lines the same way. When I add these, I'm not starting. I'm leaving the outside dark. See that? So it looks more like a shadow. And it gets brighter on the inside towards the center here. So I'm gonna be drying this off and then I can come in with another layer and that'll be white and then we'll put our little handle on the door. So I'll just wash this out. I'll show you guys the color of the water. It's so pretty right now. Okay, so it's dry. I can come in and take a little bit of white with my turquoise. A little bit more turquoise there. Let's just be a little bit more generous. And like I mentioned before, I'm gonna have the boards in the door brighter in the middle like this. That way we still have that shadow effect going on. Okay, then I'm going to take a little bit of white, a little bit of turquoise, and I'm going to go around the door to create just a little bit of a frame. And it doesn't have to be perfect. I think Things have more character when they're imperfect. I like it a little bit uh, crooked, misshapen, especially, well, look at the type of house it is. It's definitely not symmetrical. I'm gonna take a little liner brush. It's got a little liner brush right here. I'm just gonna get it a little bit wet. This one is 10. And I'll take a little bit of my phthalo blue here because it's really dark. You could use black for this if you want. And I'm just going to do a little circle here. For the doorknob. And I'll be painting that in gold, I think. I think that would look pretty. And I'm going to reapply my shadows that go right down here. And we could add a few little lines as well if you really want to have some more detail. Adding these little lines will do that. And I'm going to go around the outside of that frame. Again, with my blue. And then I'm going to add a little bit of scroll work here. Just to give us a pretty little design. Just 
just a little something like that. And then I'm just gonna do a little dab, just a little dab of blue right there. I'm gonna wash my brush out. And I'm gonna start painting the windows now. So I'm gonna use white first. A little bit of white, a little bit of the neon yellow warm. So a little bit of each. And I'll put one right here. These are gonna be little ovals. Use a little bit more white because I wanna make sure it covers up the underneath color. And I think I'm gonna add one, a little one right up here too. And we've got a cute little bungalow or little loft at the very top. Pick up, whoops, we don't want any of that turquoise in there. And just turn my brush over here. That way it makes it easier for me to get the shape. And then I'll have oh, another little window right here. Again, turn my brush over this way. I'm going to add some white inside here and here and in here. Okay, so while that's drying, I'm gonna take a little bit more of the luminous yellow warm. I still got a bit of white in here, and I'm just gonna add some highlights in between the shadows. And maybe we've got a little pathway in here. And we'll add a few little pumpkins along the way. I'm going to add a little bit of my purple now with the white in with that over top of part of this. This will give us a little bit more of a shadow. If I take both colors together, we'll see what happens. Without blending them, you see, you get more of a natural look when you just take a little scoop, a little bit of each one. Okay, and then I want to take a little bit more of my blue, a little bit more purple, and right down here I'm going to add a bit more of a shadow. So I'm going to start it first just with that. I think it would be really cute to have a little chimney right about here and I'm going to use some more of my luminous violet. I'm going to put it right here on this little dish next to my green and my phthalo blue. So along with the olive green and the violet as well as a little bit of blue you can get a nice dark color and i can start coming in here with some more depth and shadow and this will make our pumpkins and things that we want to stand out just really be able to stand out more so it's important to have those shadow areas for more contrast and to light up the other areas that you want to. I'm gonna go over some of these shadows here towards us in the foreground. We can tap a little bit for a little bit of foliage and then pull. At any time, you can pick up a little bit of purple if you want to soften and it's still going to be dark because we've got those darker colors in there and I like that. I like having as many colors um, 
as I can get away with. I think it's fun. It adds a lot to a painting. So, for instance, a little bit of this violet color. We can get some in. I just add it right down in here. Tap and scumble. And I think if I make this area a little bit darker, right, I can have a pumpkin here that'll really show up. Maybe we'll set some pumpkins right inside here. Take a little bit of our blue and purple without washing my brush off. Right, I'm just going to enhance this area a little bit. And take a little bit of the violet and the light yellow warm. And let's add a little bit of that here as well. So I'm going to take a little bit of water so I can pull this out and it doesn't look patchy here on the bottom. Now this, see this olive green with the white? There's a little bit of that neon yellow in there too. I'm going to take a little bit more of that and I'm going to come in here. Right where we have highlights and wash those darker colors out. Get back to my clean brush. Take those colors again. And just start to add a little tap, little taps. In fact, I'm going to start adding right in here. I just want to start tapping in and adding some vines, climbing vines. some leaves in here. When you push and tap with a side like this of your filbert brush, look at it. it just looks like leaves. Makes the perfect shape. I love using filbert brushes. They're awesome. I always recommend to my students to, to really have, if you can, try to have, try to build up your brush um, collection by having two or three of the same brush, but just in different sizes. just a little bit right in here and I'm going to start to outline these windows very carefully with my liner brush and if it's too tricky for me to use my liner brush then I'm going to switch over to um, a round brush so I'm trying to I'm going to try to get two things done at once here like the little grid in the window which is going to look a little bit softer because the white is still wet, but I want that to happen. I want to have it look a little bit softer. So I'm just going to go right down the center like that. And then a few, one on either side. And then we're going to go across one in the middle. And then one there. I'm going to just pull and wipe off the excess there on my little towel. I'm going to go back to those dark colors. And I'm going to go around 
all around. And I don't know if you guys are picking up on my pinky resting here. In each video where I'm, I need to really steady my hand for little details like this, this is key in keeping your hand steady. If I was to try and go like this, oh, it'd be so tough. You really need to steady your hand, rest your pinky there, and it helps. As long as the paint is dry underneath, you'll be able to do that. Now what I want to do is take a little bit of white and I'm going to go partially over that blue, just partially, and make another ring around here. Okay, and I'm going to do the same thing on each window, but I would like to make these a little bit darker. And I, and I definitely could just wait till it's dry, but I do like uh, to have that mixture a little bit light and dark for my lines and grid in the window. And you can paint your windows however you want, right? You could have just a cross or like a little T I'm going to just go and do this one a little bit quicker. Okay, go around those colors again. It doesn't matter if sometimes you're using a little bit more. I'm just going to just go over this one carefully here. Make it a little bit thicker. Sometimes you can use a little bit more blue or a little bit more of the violet if you want. Really doesn't matter. And maybe I'll just do this one just with a little cross inside, just so you guys can see and decide what kind of window that you want. And then we'll go ahead and follow up. Same technique. It will be a little bit difficult if you don't have quite enough paint on your brush. Probably two here. Go back, reload my brush. One, two. And I might have, probably gonna have some foliage around the top and maybe uh, some little window boxes here too. Wash all of that out. And then I'm gonna go in. This time I'm gonna take a little bit of white with my turquoise. And I'm going to go around partially, remember, partially over top of the blue or the dark colors. And I'll do the same thing here. These little fairy tale fantasy houses are so much fun. It really brings the kid out in you no matter what age you are. And you can change the colors, really make it your own. You can pick any color that you want for the trim on your windows or anything really. Okay, I'm gonna add a little highlight on the grid here just with some white and a little bit of turquoise. So I'm gonna go on one side. This is optional, but if you wanna add just a little something extra, you can do that. Well, I'm just gonna wash my brush off here and make a gold color with my light yellow warm 
little bit of white and an inside my little door handle. Just gonna add a little little highlight here. I still have all those other colors, right? Just adding a little something. And then you want to add a little bit more color and light in your windows. You can go in after and do that. I'm going to wait so I don't pick up any more of that blue. I did a little bit there and it'll dry a bit green. And that's okay. I'm not worried about that because I know I can cover that up. And even if I left it like that, it's fine too. But I want to add a few little um, chimneys. And I'm going to use a small um, a filbert brush here. If you have a really small flat brush, I do somewhere, I just can't find it right now. A flat brush would be best. And I'm going to take this dark color to start the olive green, the violet, maybe a little bit of blue in there. And I'm going to add a little chimney. Now I'm going to have some foliage under here, so I may as well just kind of scumble this color out of my brush because I know I'm going to use that. And I'm going to go over top of this here. Get a cute little chimney just like this. And then add a little bit of my neon yellow warm without washing my brush off. add a few little dabs and taps. Maybe it's an old stone, little stone brick chimney. I'll do a little highlight there on the top and on the side. And then I'm just going to take this color and start from right up there. I'm going to make that kind of curvy, like it's a top of a squash or a pumpkin or a gourd or something. And I'm going to go down the side, take those colors again, and really start coming in with some more shadow on this side, and we're going to start to build up some foliage. Could be a little leaves. We could have fun with the top of this house. Make little leaves. And even have some swirls like that, some little lines dangling. We'll add a little bit more of that later on. And I'm going to pick up a little bit of that yellow and white. Start adding just a few little areas in here for some highlights. A little bit more on this side of the chimney. See, as it starts to dry, you can build up and add a little bit more. I'm going to pick up a little bit of that neon yellow along with the other colors in my brush and start tapping in some highlights for what are going to be some of the leaves 
and whatever type of plants and flowers we have growing on the top of this cute little house. Okay, I'm gonna take my olive green with my blue and I'm gonna add a little arch that comes up and over each one of these. And then we'll just start to tap in underneath and partially into that yellow, those lighter highlight colors that we have here. Now we can take a little bit of that color and add it down here as well. bit of paint left in there and I can just dilute it with some water and do a quick little filter over some of these areas. And I'm going to switch over to um, another filbert. I wish that I had uh, an oval mop a little bit smaller but I can use this. It just won't look as fluffy as I want it to. We'll see what we can do. I'll dry it off a little bit. Maybe that'll help fluff it up. Hope you guys are enjoying this video today um if you are it really helps if you leave a comment below like my video and of course subscribe to my channel but i'm just going to take a little bit of black and i don't often use black but i'm going to use a little bit of black here i've just got one of these fluid black paints i'm going to add it right there and i'm going to take a little bit of cadmium yellow light hue and i'm going to take neon yellow, a little bit of my yellows, a little bit of that olive green, and just get a nice dark, dark color here, a little bit more black, just to make it darker. I don't want any blue, I want this to be a real earthy, olive -y color, but darker than my olive green I used earlier. And what I'm going to do is just start to tap using a quarter of the way up my filbert and the tip. Again, I'm going to steady my hand here. And just wherever I feel like I need to be a little bit steadier is where I'm going to use it. And start to come out. Push more foliage towards the top above the window and then have it kind of curl over like this. I think it's really cute. We'll push a little bit in here, push and tap.
I'm gonna love this. Just winding those vines up on this little top of the house. We're gonna add some smoke coming out of the chimney too eventually, but I wanna continue working on this first. And I'm gonna add a little bit more of the yellow and the olive green now. Just little taps, push and tap, leaving some spaces of course, so we have that nice shadow underneath showing. I think I need to go in here and add that darker color. I think I forgot about this little one here. And I want to add um, some little, possibly some little window boxes there. I think that would look cute too. I could push and tap to make these look like leaves if you want it. I'm going to go back into my blue and really add a cute little swirl in here. And then a little highlight with yellow. And back in with my neon yellow warm. And just tap down in here. Add a little bit of black. Make that a little bit darker. And now I'm going to add some smoke coming out of the chimney. Um, I really like to use a little bit of white and tint it with some light blue. I think that's pretty. Um, maybe even a little bit of turquoise in there. Just a little bit. And then I'm just going to turn my brush like this and add a quick little wiggle and squiggle. And then soften with my finger like this. And then just add a little bit more. Maybe there's some other little houses in the distance. Maybe there's a little village. We could just have a little hint of that. With some Bits of smoke coming up back there. So I've got a little mini mop brush right here. And I'm going to take some more of my neon yellow. I'm also going to take a little bit of neon orange. And I'm going to have a full list of these colors below in the description of the video. If you're curious about these neon colors, you can get the whole set. Um, on Amazon and I'll try to find the link for you. Okay, so what I want to do with my little mini mop brush here is take a bit of white and a little bit of this bright neon yellow and I'm going to add a few little soft highlights here just to soften up part of this side. I think this will look really pretty.
fit right in here. See, even pushing and kind of tapping like that, you can make little leaf shapes, which is really cool. Okay, now I think it would be fun to add a little bit of peachy pink to the house. So with a little bit of that luminous yellow and white and a little bit of pink, just a little bit here. Maybe we can just come in and just add a little bit, carefully not to cover up all the other colors, right? And I'm going to take a little bit more, but I'm not going to blend them this time, and I'm going to add a few little flowers. And maybe we've got a few little flowers here in the window, and I'll add a little window box in a minute. A little bit of orange. Just a few little hints here that there's, it's fall and it's getting close to Halloween in this painting in this setting, but there's still a few flowers that haven't uh, died off yet from the frost. Add a little bit of a filter, just a slight little bit there over, over top of the chimney. And then just a little tiny bit. See, it's all these little touches, right? These little touches here and there. When you go the extra mile and take that time and add a little bit here and there, it's the little things that make a difference. And in life too, right? Little things make a big difference. Kind of reminds me of Tom, like, not this painting, but Thomas Kincaid's paintings had so many different colors and pastels and they were so vibrant, but so soft at the same time. I loved and still do love his art. Um, I'm going to go over a little bit of the smoke here now. It's kind of faded and that's because I used a bit of water in there and that can happen, right? When it dries. Let's just take a little bit more here. And yeah, just do the same thing. And then soften. There. Okay, for some little window boxes, I'll just take a little bit of my olive green with some black. And we'll just tap, tap. And just pull just a little rectangle. Okay, and then for some leaves without washing my brush off, because I want to have a little bit of that black in there and olive green, we can add a little bit of these leaves and kind of vines dangling down, giving this more of a 3D look. Take a little bit more, be a little bit more generous here. Uh, the neon colors will either dry darker or lighter. Yellow's going to dry a little bit darker. And I don't want to forget about this one up here. It's kind of hidden because we have this over top. I think I'll add a cute little vine in here. Take my yellow with a little bit of white and my liner brush. 
just a few little squiggly, swirly lines, a little bit of scrolly vines, just to break that up a little bit and add just a little bit more, make this door frame and the vines and foliage around it a little bit more special. There. Now right in this area here, I want to add a little bit more highlights and leaves. See all the different brushes you can use for creating that effect. We could even have it kind of make it look like it's uh, starting to be dusk out and add uh, just a little hint of some stars. Few little stars like that. That's kind of pretty too. And if you wanted to make it look um, even more like nighttime, what I would recommend is taking a bit of phthalo blue and just lightly going over the top. And I can demonstrate that right now. Take a little bit of that phthalo, a little bit of water. Just gonna carefully pull that over the top. Just the littlest bit. A little bit of my light blue violet with it. So it transitions. So even just doing a little bit like that makes a big difference. Okay, so I'm ready to start painting some pumpkins. And I'm gonna take a little bit of white first with my Neon Yellow Warm. And I know that I wanna have one here. So I'm just gonna pull and sweep, pull and sweep. So it kind of dips down a little bit there, doesn't it? And a little bit more. We'll have a smaller one here. I like to make them different shapes too, right? You want you don't want them to all be the same. Some of them are more oblong. And then just being a little bit more generous now in some areas with the neon yellow warm. Then we can have some smaller ones. Gonna have some little ones in here. And then some right up by the door. Have a little one here. And while I've got this color here, I'm gonna take this, cause it's pretty safe now to come in here and add just enhance the light and the color in the windows. It's about creating warmth and a comforting, warm looking cottage and inviting. And this peachy warm glow is really what uh, appeals to me. I love this soft golden light. I find it uh, inviting. I'm gonna add the tops of the pumpkins, my liner brush, black and olive green. And Just add a few little lines as well. And it's gonna pick up, as I add these lines, we're gonna pick up a little bit of that uh, yellow and white, but that's good. I want that color. 
I want that to kind of pick up and or bleed through. So I want to make the tops of my uh, pumpkins look kind of swirly and have character to them. Now there's going to be a shadow underneath these, right? So I'm going to be a little bit generous with some black and some green. And they're kind of nestled in um, some grass and leaves and moss or whatever. add a little highlight so that we can see the tops of these. A little bit more there and I'm just using some white, yellow and uh, the both yellows, the warm and the cool. Any light color you want just to make those stand out a little more. And we'll do the same thing on these ones here. I'm going to pick up some of my neon orange. And just start adding that along with even a little bit of black and green on my brush. This is just going to give us that. Um, and even a little bit of this cadmium yellow here. So you just want to make sure you have like different variations of color. some darker orange, some lighter orange. And I'm gonna switch my brush because this is honestly a little bit difficult to use. I need something a little bit bigger. I'll use my small, oops, my small filbert brush here. Take a bit of white, a little bit of yellow. Get a nice pumpkin color here.
I'm going to mute this orange with a bit of black and green and then I can come around the edge here. Well, I need to make that a little bit darker. So I'm just going to take the black and olive green only. Just add a few more of those lines there. And we need a little highlight. You want to add uh, more pumpkins, like maybe make them stand out a little bit more. So layer them, just go back and just add a couple, one in front of the other like that. And then add the little top to your pumpkin and a few little lines. I would go back to my liner brush and finish those lines. Add just a little bit of foliage here to set these in. Could add some leaves. And some vines because um, pumpkin patches have those uh, vines, they're on vines, aren't they? So I'm going to go back to my liner brush, just take a little bit of black. Orange, a bit of black. So I can outline this and make this stand out more. These ones that I just added, right? We need that separation. So we need a little shadow there. And we'll add a little bit more of the neon yellow warm to brighten some of these areas on the pumpkins up. If we take a little bit of white along with that, we'll get a nice bright highlight. What a fun painting this is. I'm so glad I get to share this with you guys. Some of the things I love about having a YouTube channel is that I can reach so many. And I know there's a lot of you out there that love Halloween and the fall as much as I do. So we can all paint this together. Now even going over these lines, they're still going to dry darker. So I'm not worried about those disappearing. So 
I'll add a few little vines in here before I call this painting all done. Just with my liner, black and yellow. I might need a little bit of white just to make that stand out a bit more. Add a few more flowers. Okay, so I'm going to call this painting all done. This was such a joy to paint. I'm happy I got to share this with you guys, and I cannot wait to see what you come up with. Be sure to look at, for the link below and share your version of my paintings on our Facebook group. Have a wonderful day. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and join Patreon for more. I appreciate all of your support. Bye, everybody.